What were you like when you were younger? If you had the chance to speak to your younger self, what would you say? Jesse Jones from OLG's The Drive is hitting the streets. He's asking about traveling back in time and giving the younger versions of ourselves advice. What dreams would we pursue? Would we be more adventurous? Follow the excitement as it unfolds online at globalnews.ca slash the drive. Brought to you by Lotto Max. Dream bigger. Dellen Millard sentenced to a third consecutive life term. This means uh, that Dellen Millard, he was just sentenced today uh, for killing his father to another consecutive term of life in prison. He must serve 75 years in prison before being eligible to po- apply for parole. I want to know how unusual this is because we're constantly having question, you know, talking about this, uh, questioning the justice society, uh, the justice system in Canada, and how you know it leans heavily in favor of the criminal as opposed to the victim, or at, le- at least that's how people see it sometimes. Uh, Joseph Newberg is on the line right now. Joseph, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So, Joseph, 75 years in prison, no chance of parole for Della Millard. Uh, how unusual is this in Canada? Well, this is new since the amendments from the Conservative government some time ago, where you can have consecutive life sentences. So I think uh, with three consecutive life sentences, this may be the first in Canada, although there are others serving consecutive sentences for homicide. Um, but I do want to say this. In the past, when people were convicted of multiple homicides, even though they weren't served consecutively but were served uh, concurrently, that did not mean that somebody would be out on parole at 25 years. Many would go on to 35 or 40 years or never would get released because the multiple nature of the killings is a factor which uh, is not a good factor when you're applying for parole. So, Right, the parole board been... would take that into consideration. Absolutely. And and in this particular case, this isn't a, an instance where we have somebody who had, you know, got into some sort of altercation in a location where there was three victims during the same type of transaction. This is serial killing. And so each life has to have its own sentence because you can't determine one is worth more than the other. This is a pretty good example of where we have, and, and, and it's been a rarity in Canada, but this is really a serial type of killing. And so it has to be recognized, and so it's an appropriate uh, uh, sentence. Sure. Uh, Della Millard not only uh, killed his father, but he also killed Laura Babcock, his former girlfriend, yeah. and uh, Tim Bosma, who he had no affiliation with at all, a complete stranger. Um, can he appeal this sentence, Joe? Uh, he can appeal, but he's going to have absolutely no success whatsoever. Is, does this pr- surprise you? Because, you know, usually our justice system, well, our justice system is largely based on the idea that, you know, we don't put people away forever. We try and rehabilitate them and get them back into society. Well, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, but it's not always the case. When you're dealing with cases like this, where you have a degree of evil that you don't see in other cases, those, those are not the cases where you're going to be able to insert rehabilitation. So when you deal with somebody like Darren Millard, he clearly scores very high on what I would call the psychopathy checklist, which is about, you know, those who have psychopathic traits and um, are not redeemable. You know, th- th- these were the thrill kill, you know, in particular is, you know, incredibly evil and offensive. And the conduct has a clear reckless disregard for life. And so with an individual like this, it would be I don't know what submissions a defense counsel could make other than this is a person who needs to be removed from society because likelihood is they'll continue to do what they do. So Della Millard, 75 years in prison, no chance of parole. Does this set a a precedent for future cases? Like I'm thinking ahead, looking ahead to alleged serial killer Bruce MacArthur. If he is found guilty and there have been, you know, numerous charges, could he be facing the same uh, sort of sentence? Absolutely. I mean, mean, there's no doubt that when you're dealing with serial killers, which we have, you know, infrequent, thank God, experience with in Canada, those are particular type of offenders with a particular type type of uh, psych- psychological makeup that, um, you know, you're going to have multiple consecutive sentences if convicted. So I'm, I'm not making any comments on that particular case because mm-hmm. it's going to go to trial sure. and he deserves a fair trial and we don't want to taint the jury pool. But the reality is when you're dealing with any type of case where there's serial killing, 
those are very appropriate cases to have uh, consecutive uh, life sentences. Uh, today, the uh, judge who sentenced uh, Millard to three consecutive uh, life sentences with no chance of parole for 75 years, he's going to be 102 years old uh, right. if he ever gets out of prison. Um, the judge said the motive for the money, because he killed his father because he was worried about his inheritance. It played no role in her decision, but she said that the circumstantial case turned on a lie that Della Millard told police after his father's death because he basically told investigators that he found his dad dead in bed around 6 right. o'clock and he said he was saw his father last alive around noon the day before and he stayed at his friend Mark Smitch's house. And meanwhile, they looked at his phone records and saw him move from Smitch's house around 1 a.m. to his father's house where he stayed till shortly after 6 a.m. And right. he shot his father while he was sleeping through the eye. Right. It's a it's a particularly heinous story. It's horrific. All three of them are horrific. I mean, these are horrific acts of murder. Um, you know, all are terrible, and and families have suffered uh, you know irreparable harm as a result of this type of conduct. So, this is you know one of the type of offenders where you have a high degree of evil. And I don't use this term very much, but there is a high degree of evil in it. And this is somebody who has to be separated from society permanently because of the nature of what they are. It's, it's sad and incredible damage which has been done uh, to all of the families of these victims. When we think of evil, immediately, I think a lot of Canadians think of Paul Bernardo. Why isn't he facing the same sort of sentencing? Well, he's not getting out of jail anyways. He's a dangerous offender. But so. he's eligible for parole. Well, he's eligible for applying for parole. It right. doesn't mean he's going to get it. And he's not going to get it because his risk profile is off the charts. So there's nothing that can be done uh, through some type of therapy or rehabilitative programming while he's serving a sentence to uh, mitigate his risk, save and except for a stroke that immobilizes him in a wheelchair. That's, that's just the reality. His risk profile is so high, you cannot attenuate his risk to manage him safely in the community. And the parole board has to look at that because, again, he is offending was serial in nature, was for thrills. And again, you're dealing with an individual who has uh, personality disorders and a high degree of psychopathy. And so that type of an offender as well is highly dangerous. And so whether we say consecutive sentence or not, he is designated a dangerous offender. And yes, in two years, he can reappear before the parole board. But, you know, I, I, I cannot imagine any parole board uh, under any circumstances, thinking that he could be safely managed in the community. It's just not possible. So people like Dylan Millard, th are they kept in maximum security for the entirety of their sentence? Well, that's not something I'm terribly familiar with, but they they could remain in maximum. For, uh, I'll be on a minute. They could be in maximum uh, for their entire sentence, but within a structured setting where there's a high degree of security, an individual's risk will go down, and so they could be managed maybe on a medium uh, secure unit in a medium facility. And, and that's not something that really should worry the public so much, but um, because it's still locked, high secure, it's a jail, it's not, it's not a country club. Uh -huh. but, but the likelihood is this individual will remain in a maximum secure facility for a very, very long time. Well, Joseph, I always appreciate you being on the show. Sounds like you got to run, so I'm going to let you. I know yeah, you're a busy I, man, so yeah. I'm going to let you go. And Thank uh, it, thanks so much for your expertise. Have a great show. Take care. Cheers. That's Joseph Bye. Newberger, senior partner with Newberger and Partners.